faster. You had to be around there to see what was going on in the 80s and the 90s. We were getting technology so fast, we, there was no time for testing. Companies were putting out processors and putting out chips so fast, they were getting them out there without being tested or very little testing. You would buy a computer today because a different one was available tomorrow. They were getting it, the manufacturers were getting them on the market today because something different was going to be there tomorrow. I was in Silicon Valley at the time and they had production lines going 24 hours a day and when you got off work one day, it's possible your assembly line changed the next day without you knowing about it because technology changed that fast. Nobody can comprehend what it was like in Silicon Valley back then. It was truly amazing, but here's what was happening. You would go to the store, buy a computer, whose central processing unit could very well have been in the manufacturing end only a week earlier. It could have been in, 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 the, in the production line a week earlier. Put together, not tested, put on the shelf, and you go home and buy it. You turn on your computer, and the computer is on for two hours, and the central processing unit explodes. And that's what was happening in many cases. People were getting these central processing units that were uh, getting so hot they weren't tested and then they'd go home and they'd explode. And I have seen those things explode. Uh, you'd open up your case and you'd see a pile of dust where the central processing unit used to be. And that's the way, that's, that's how things happened back then. Um, sometimes they would turn into dust, sometimes parts would fly all over the place or chips, plastic chips. It was terrible. So, the first thing they did was come up with what's called a heat sink. You'd have the well, looking end-on on the central processing unit, you'd have this central processing unit, and those are all the leads coming out of it, and you'd have this usually aluminum thing that looks something like this. Where, isn't it amazing? A heat sink looks very similar to the light bulbs. Um, the heat sink would pull the heat off the chip. And the more surface area on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the heat sink would allow more heat to be pulled off the chip, okay? As things got faster, we needed a fan. So they'd mount, instead of the, the, the um, heat sink, they'd have this little uh, box fan that would pull the heat off the chip. Then as time went on, we had both heat sinks and a fan. Then as time went on, we got um, uh, very um, exotic. We had much larger fans mounted on the, well, not that big, about this big, mounted on the side of the computer, and then a plastic cowling that would go right to the top of the central processing unit to have this much larger fan sucking the heat off the central processing unit. You have something like that in the computers that you have at your desk now. Um, yes? I was just going there. We, oh, that's all right, that's all right. We have had all kinds of exotic things come out. In my lab, I had a student make a water-cooled computer. I actually have this computer down in my lab that has a reservoir, a cooling tower, and water being pumped to the central processing unit and returning to the cooling tower and into the reservoir. Um, and it works, yes. Uh, like gaming computers, where they use like liquid nitrogen or something? Well, yeah, if you've got that kind of money, although gamers seem to never run out of money. Um, but yes, uh, some computers have um, refrigeration systems, not only water-cooled, but refrigeration systems. I'll come back to the refrigeration in a minute, but there was one weird one that I actually saw on uh, the internet where it's this computer where the case is completely sealed. You know, that case where you normally have little uh, vent slots and all that? It's a completely sealed unit, and they fill it up with oil and it keeps the computer cool that way. <laughs> anyway, you probably need some really good electronics inside there so that it never goes bad on you, but I've seen those. Now, back to the refrigeration. Yes, there are kind of air conditioning units, as these two gentlemen were saying, that you can mount on central processing units to keep them uh, cool. Those are out there, pricey, but you can do that. Also, does uh, keeping things cool buy us anything? Oh yeah. There is, uh, well, you can find this on the internet, but there was actually a central processing unit that um, uh, they did a test with and they super cooled it down to absolute zero or very close to absolute zero. What's absolute zero? Uh, 486, 456 degrees below zero? 400 and like 50 or 60 degrees below zero, roughly. Uh, real cold. And what did that buy them? They got about 10 times the speed of what they should have gotten out of that central processing unit. So instead of one gigahertz, they had the equivalent of like 10 gigahertz. 
something like that. But super cooling a processor does a tremendous job of keeping it cool and getting the speed up. But how many of us can afford to keep a supply of liquid nitrogen for our computers? It's not one of the things we store in our pantry. But uh, keeping them cool does make a huge difference. So if your computer is next to another unit that's generating a lot of heat, if it's up high, that's not good for it because heat rises. Keep your computers low. Keep your computers away from anything that generates heat. Make sure your fan's working. You can buy uh, fans for your computer, the mount inside or externally. Keeping your computer cool is a real good way to um, keep your computer living longer and running faster. Okay? Yes? So those computers has to have like, like the boxes and have like the uh, cabinets Oh, yeah. Do those packages like make it like a key box in there? Well, Oh, 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 yeah, click. I thought you were going a different direction. So you're talking about the cabinets where you actually put your computer inside. Right. Right. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think those are particularly good. I've seen a couple that were designed well that had all kinds of holes all over the place. But generally, those aren't good. When you look at the computers in front of or underneath your desk, you've got vents on the front, you've got vents on the sides, and you've got vents in the back. Some computers have vents on the top and the bottom. He's talking about a cabinet where you actually put it in a drawer and close the drawer. Okay, fine. If the drawer's got vents in the front and vents on the side and all of that, maybe it's okay. But I have to say, those are not, I, when he first asked, I thought he was talking about uh, something for laptops, but it's entirely different. But if you put your computer in a drawer, man, can you imagine what you're doing to that poor little computer? It's heating up like crazy. Be very careful of that. Be real careful of that. If it's not your computer, oh well. All right. Um, now, uh, before I go on to uh, hard disks, I'm going to take um, a few minutes to show you some um, components of the computer. Oh, and I'm off the screen again. All right, the first thing is uh, motherboard. This is not, I'm trying to show this to the camera too. This is not uh, the newest motherboard that's out there. But you can see on here, these long slots here are the RAM memory. These are expansion slots. In the back here, you can see this is what's called a parallel port for old style printing. This is a serial port. These are uh, USB ports and mouse and keyboard. Again, this is a little bit older uh, computer. Your central processing unit goes right here. And I've got one for you to see. Uh, this is for IDE drives, we'll talk about later. Um, and again, I said expansion slots. But here's your RAM memory and here's for the uh, central processing unit. So I will pass, oh, and this is for the power supply. The power supply in your computer, you plug your motherboard in there. I'll pass that around. Next thing, we have two different types of central processing units. One thing I did want to tell you about central processing units. In the early days of computers, the central processing units laid flat on the motherboard like this. So your motherboard um, was flat like that and the central processing unit sat on top of it. Later, in order to improve um, uh, or get rid of the heat problem or help get rid of it, we mounted the central processing units uh, vertically up from the board. Later on, we went back down to laying them flat again. All right. The, uh, I have two processors here. One of them that goes inside that um, uh, computer. Again, I'm showing this to the camera. Uh, we've got the uh, leads on the back, and this sits flat on the motherboard. Okay. Then we have this kind of central processing unit, for, not for this motherboard, but this kind of processing unit plugs into the motherboard like an expansion card like that. You've got a heat sink here. This is all one giant heat sink, and in some cases it even, have an, even had a fan mounting on it. But in this case, the central processing unit is mounted this way, showing the camera. All right, next. Um, RAM memory. This is old style RAM memory, but the new stuff looks very similar. It's a little longer, a little taller, a little thinner, but basically this is what RAM memory looks like. Okay? Is that the same that would be in a laptop? Uh, laptops, it, again, it looks similar, but laptop is different from uh, desktop memory. L laptop memory is usually shorter and taller. Okay? So instead of something like this, it would be like this and like this. Okay? So, RAM memory, I'm trying to show to the camera. Okay, couple other, a few other parts we've got here. Uh, 
this is one type of graphics card. Right? You can tell it's a graphics card by the uh, plug that we've got here. That's a typical three row, five pin per row, total of 15 pins for this video card. We have, this is an analog video card, but we have digital video cards that particularly you gamers will, uh, are familiar with uh, the digital video. It gives you a little bit better picture quality. But anyway, this is a video card. You've noticed on the motherboard that's coming around, there is no video that mounts onto the motherboard. Okay? You just plug this into one of those expansion slots and you have, you plug your monitor into that. Next card is the network card. Um, not all but most networks uh, you, for your computer you plug into it using this type of um, connector. It is a, um, this is a um, RJ45 connector. It looks pretty much like a telephone cord, a uh, telephone connector only bigger, wider. Um, and it has eight pins as opposed to the four, as opposed to the four for a telephone. Yes? So the same thing as Ethernet? Ethernet, same thing. Ethernet uh, RJ45 connector. Okay? And again, this particular motherboard, wherever it is, doesn't have a network card built into it. Most new motherboards today have uh, video built into it, network capability built into it, all kinds of things built into it. This particular one, you'd have to get an expansion card, okay? All right. Next one is your sound card. Again, most newer motherboards today have uh, sound built into the motherboard and you have these round ports uh, built into the motherboard. In this case, with this motherboard, again, you use, uh, you have to get an expansion card and get sound out of it this way. Now, the colors that are on here are one-off. The standard colors you see are green, blue, and red. The black one here, just showing that it's an older card. But the industry standards now are for the base, the three base ports are green, red, and blue. So you have one hole on for sound that's green, one hole that's red or pink, and then another one that's blue. Anybody know what each one is for? Anybody? No, yes? Green is headphones, I think. Uh, speakers or sound out. Sound out. Uh, red is for microphone or sound in. Microphone and blue. Video? No, it's only sound. This is typically your line in if when you plug in a stereo. Yes, you can use the microphone for a line in. I've done that, many people do it. But generally you keep the red for microphone and the blue is for line in, like if you want to tap in your stereo system through your computer. In case you have a really nice sound system on your computer, you plug your stereo into this and hear your stereo through your computer or record the music onto, you know, in your computer. Okay? So those are the industry standards now. Um, there is uh, some manufacturers, Creative Labs, uh, like have a, a yellow and they have a black. Those are for higher end uh, speaker systems. Uh, you know, subwoofers and what have you. Okay, uh, next component I've got is a CD-ROM drive. We're going to talk about this a little later. CD-ROM, DVD drive. This happens to be a CD-DVD drive. Okay, I know most of you have seen those, but anyway, I'll pass that around. Uh, this is a floppy disk drive, which has kind of died used to come standard with computers, but now you have to request them. When's the last time anybody used a floppy disk? <laughs> Been a while, right? Okay, floppy disk, uh, floppy disk drive. Okay, uh, three and a quarter inch. We also had five, uh, three and a half inch. We used to have five and a quarter inch drives. Don't even see those anymore. Last thing I'll show you is a hard drive. This is a typical hard drive for desktop units. Um, the ones for laptops are about the size of a deck of cards and about half the thickness of a deck of cards. All right, but this is a standard uh, hard standard size hard disk. This is only 10 gigabytes, and um, but obviously we go up to much higher. But we'll talk about um, uh, hard disks, uh, size of hard disks, in just a minute. Okay.